Hello and welcome back to the Sex and Healing Podcast. I'm your host, Erin Kiner, and thank you so much for joining me as we take a wild ride together through the realms of sex and healing. Today, we're talking all about how pleasure makes you powerful. Two of my favorite topics, <laughs> pleasure and personal power. So I want to invite you into my free five-day pleasure challenge for women. It starts on April 19th. The link to join is going to be found in the show notes or via my Instagram at Erin Kiner. And we're expecting hundreds of women from all over the world to be joining us for this amazing free five-day challenge. So please come and join. It's going to be an amazing experience that I will be hosting from quarantine in Australia before I start my journey. Or as I start my journey, I should say, I'm going to turn that hotel into a goddamn goddess den. You just wait till you see what I've got planned for myself (laughs) to get through those two weeks. It's going to be unbelievable. So as always, if you're enjoying this podcast, I would love if you subscribe so you never miss an episode. If you feel called, I would love if you leave a five-star written review on iTunes or share the episode with someone that you think will will gain value. So let's dive into it. How on earth does pleasure make you powerful? You know, when I think about pleasure and my first experiences of really understanding and prioritizing pleasure, I realized most importantly, the stark contrast between a life where pleasure wasn't at the forefront and where pleasure was and the sense of aliveness, the sense of satisfaction and the sense of joy that I experienced in my day-to-day life by prioritizing pleasure. I think I was raised with a personal belief about myself that I'm strong, that I'm hardy, that you can just knuckle down and get it done. There was certainly no pleasure in my household growing up, uh, despite the fact that I was a very, how would you say, like, as a child, I loved to wear my fur coat. I would demand to wear my fur coat to my brother's soccer training when I was a child I would have to wear dangly earrings I even at three years old demanded to wear my bikini to daycare so at a very young age before I could be influenced with other people's thoughts and opinions I was seeking pleasure the kind of pleasure that's important to me tactile pleasure I love having beautiful quality clothes even now it's really important to me the quality of my clothes And I don't care about, you know, labels or dressing to those kind of standards. All I care about is the quality of what I wear and quality of often, often, (laughs) I'm a bit tongue tied today, I'm sorry. It often comes at a price. But what I find is that with, let's use my yoga gear, for example, my Lululemon pants, I will travel the world for Lululemon since it's not here in Indonesia and I used to be Lululemon ambassador in Melbourne so I was lucky enough to be dressed by them for two years and sponsored by them but the quality of those yoga pants makes me absolutely incapable of wearing another brand (laughs) the joy I get from wearing such well-made and well-fitting yoga pants completely transforms any experience I have of yoga or fitness if I had to wear pants that didn't fit pants that rode down at the crutch, pants that cut in at the waist, pants that cut off my calves, anything like that, it's going to be drastically influencing my experience. So even though I was raised in a household where we didn't put pleasure first or those things were kind of seen as fickle or unimportant or superficial, I can recognize that it was inside me from a very young age to value these things. When I started diving a bit more into astrology, I remember finding out that Venus sits in the fourth house. So Venus is the pleasure uh, is the planet of beauty and pleasures, and it sits in the fourth house of my chart, which is the house of home. And I remember reading something in there about finding something online that said that they tend to like electronics that improve the household environment and and gosh, I can't even remember how it was phrased now. It was like, you know, nice things around the house. And I laughed so hard to read that about myself because when my separation, when my divorce was going through, I remember thinking, I don't want anything from the house 
except for the Sonos speakers and the linen bed sheets. <laughs> I also would spend nearly $100 on a brand named Aesop of hand soap and body lotion from Australia, another favorite, and take it with me to Hawaii. These things are always valued in my life. Even if I didn't understand, they, they were things that were adding great value to my daily experience. So then I went on to really understand what pleasure means and what pleasure means for women in particular. And the fact that we have this anatomy that is designed to experience massive amounts of pleasure, far more than what most people think. And in fact, I would say that one of the biggest blocks to me teaching this to others is that so many women think that they're fine where they are. They think that their sexual potential is fine where they are. They think that the levels of pleasure they experience is fine or even good because we are so unaware of what our potential actually is that we settle for so much less because we think that that's okay or we think that that's the status quo. So when I started really bringing pleasure into my life, I realized, wow, I am a pleasure driven, I'm a pleasure seeker at heart and this is starting to really drastically change the way that I live my life. And then I was lucky enough to meet my partner who we're transitioning out of that relationship now, but he was the one who really, really showed me what sexual pleasure potential I had inside of me. And as I started to take that journey and open and unblock and discover these things about my physical body and what my physical body was capable of and the types of orgasms and the number of orgasms and the length of those orgasms, like that is a reward in and of itself. I had a really big orgasm on the weekend and I said to him that it has been so long since I've had one of those. I've actually been quite stressed the last couple of weeks. And obviously our relationship has been under stress as we're navigating our way out of it and the things that led up to that. Just big transitions in life in general. And that stress had impacted my pleasure potential. So I had one of these giant orgasms again, and then I got like high and giggly and like I, I could barely open my eyes or stand up and we we're getting ready to leave the house. <laughs> I just was like this giggling mess on the bed. My body's being flooded with these amazing feel-good endorphins and hormones through my body. That's available to us all, all the time. It's its own drug in many, many ways, but we have to understand how our bodies work in order to be able to experience that. So when I look at people who tell me, oh no, my sex life is pretty good or like, oh no, I don't need that. On the inside, I know I'm like, girl, when you start experiencing this level of pleasure, when you start really, I, I wouldn't even call it biohacking because you're not hacking, you're using the body the way the body's designed to be used. The evidence of that is immediate the radiance that shows, the glow that comes out of a woman who is experiencing that kind of pleasure, who lives, there's this juiciness and this plumpness to fullness to her energy when she's being pleasured, that's evident everywhere. So I start having this sexual journey with my partner. I start experiencing these kind of things and all of a sudden I notice life is changing in all of these other ways. The income that I'm making in my business drastically goes up. The things that I found I was settling for and I was 75% happy with most of my life, I want more. And I start naturally creating and experiencing and receiving more than what I was. My relationships and my friendships, they all start to up level. This also means that some things had to fall away. Some things that were not pleasurable and were not in alignment anymore were also falling away. So how was it that I start having these amazing orgasms and my life starts to up level? It's because da, 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 pleasure makes you powerful. <laughs> pleasure is power. So I was talking to another dear friend of mine who we have been good friends for a long time, but I started talking about some of my sexuality and I was talking about it in a way that is somewhat explicit. Uh, yeah, I'll just leave it at that. That's the best way to describe it. <laughs> but she said, I don't know if I'm comfortable talking about this with you because you're my friend. And I said, 
oh yes why why wouldn't we talk about this and she said I don't know I don't I don't know if this crosses the boundaries of my marriage so we have many people have this assumption that any kind of sharing of our sexuality between non-sexual intimate partners is could be problematic or a breach of boundaries of our relationships because we're so used to our sexual energy being shut down we're so used to hiding it and not having it on show or not being safe to express or it's being expressed in unhealthy ways that we shut it down and we don't talk about such things which is why the majority of people wouldn't talk about how they masturbate with their friends or how often they masturbate with their friends. I think these kind of conversations are coming more and more, becoming more and more comfortable. There's more discussions of such things on social media, but for a long, long time, this kind of stuff was not okay to be spoken about. And so I, I dove into that experience a little bit more with this friend. And I said, you know, for me talking and sharing, and of course, that's important that that has consent behind it. And I'm very happy not to share those things if it makes someone uncomfortable. But I also wanted my friend to really have a look at where this belief comes from and, and kind of analyze it a bit more from a different level of consciousness and see if it still is right for her not to have these discussions with me. But as a very energetic person and being aware of energy, I think about a lot of things from the perspective of our personal energy and our chakras. So women's sexual pleasure lives in the sacral chakra. And essentially what my friend was saying was like, I'm not comfortable seeing your orange sacral chakra light and I don't want you to see mine. Even though we love each other and accept each other completely and where this rainbow spectrum, the base chakra is red and it transitions all the way up the rainbow spectrum till you get to the crown where it's white. But we have this expectation that the sacral chakra must be closed in order to be safe, in order to be appropriate. So when I think about personal power, there is a certain voltage of energy that we can carry in our physical system. Stress completely constricts how much of that voltage we can carry because stress is carried in the nervous system. So in order to expand the amount of energy and light that we can hold in the nervous system, we need to make sure that we're de-stressing. So meditation practices, living a slower paced life, such things like this are really important. And if you know anything about kundalini yoga and the kundalini energy that rises from the base of the spine up to the crown, it's the energy of enlightenment. It's known as all these different things in the ancient texts, but we can also look at it from a very scientific modern day understanding as well. And it's about the fluid that can, the, the pressure in the spinal fluid and how that can impact the brain. And with enough pressure built up in the spinal fluid, we can actually start to tap on the pineal gland with that pressure and release massive amounts of hormones and have very intense spiritual experiences as a result of that. So what happens as you start doing a lot of spiritual practices and ascending is that your kundalini naturally increases. The voltage of energy and the capacity of energy you can hold in your body naturally increases. And we can have these intense spiritual experiences as part of our daily life and they can happen spontaneously. But modern day life is a little bit impatient. We don't have attention spans like we used to. We want everything now. <laughs> so people do things like Kundalini yoga and try and force this energy to move faster, which can work for some people and can be very dangerous for others. So I'm not actually an advocate of doing practices with Kundalini. I'm, I'm more the advocate of doing the work that allows the Kundalini to natu naturally and spontaneously arise. But this energy and this voltage that we hold in our body is personal power. And you can see when someone has their personal energy constricted or their spirit is not occupying their body very much, there's a sallowness or an unhappiness. Actually, you know where I see it? where to me it's very obvious to see is if you go into the central business business district in the afternoon and you look at all the people who are commuting to and from the city and they've all been working in office blocks all day and there is a grayness to their energy 
that's evident. And now I'm generalizing massively. I'm not saying that everyone that lives that kind of lifestyle fits this category, but for me, it's very, very, very easy to see when you see people just like eyes to the ground, downtrodden, following the same path, commuting back and forth to a job that doesn't bring them joy. Where's their personal power? Where's their vibrance? Where's their radiance? Where's their magnetism? Now, if we shift our perspective and we go and look at someone else who is living their purpose, absolutely loving what they're doing, loving their, their contribution on the planet, they're taking care of their physical body, they're feeding their body well, they're exercising the way their body needs it, they get great amount of sleep, they live in nature, they live in rhythm with the natural cycles of our planet. Now, that person is radiant as fuck. That person you can see it in their energy field. So our personal pleasure, our sexual satisfaction, understanding how we can experience these intense peak sexual experiences and expand our sexual potential directly influences how much energy we hold in our body. Because if you shut down that sacral chakra or if you have a block in it or you're not comfortable with it, then basically instead of having seven lights on bright in your energy field, you have just six. And if any of those, if you've got one chakra blocked, no doubt that that all of them are influenced somehow because it's actually this one big correlated system. It's not simplified as just an orange light. It's actually very, very complex. But if you want a powerful life, if you want to feel full of joy and self-worth and increase your capacity to change lives and to make money and to fulfill your purpose and to manifest your desires and your dreams, then the more personal power you have, the greater the chances of that are. So why would anyone want to have any of their lights dimmed down or blocked or not focused on? So when I look at so many women in my world and myself included in the past, we're settling. We're settling for partners that don't really satisfy us, especially if you're in the dating scene. We can get so disappointed and so jaded by the dating scene. (laughs) And sometimes we're so desperate to get our needs met and to just feel some sense of connection that we sacrifice so much of what we really, really want for a couple of small benefits. I see so many women settling in jobs that they're not fully satisfied in because they want security or they feel safe there or they're too afraid to take a leap and try something new. I see, and you know, for myself, I was even settling with my body's physical capacity. I'd never pushed my body or committed to my body and my training to find out what my body's fullest potential is. But I'm on that journey now and it's been amazing. And I can't wait to see because my body's potential also doesn't stop. So I was settling with the acceptance that I had with the state of my body being my body. So my intention with teaching pleasure and teaching sexuality is to empower women never to settle is to understand our own energy and our own anatomy and our own pleasure so well and be able to create more pleasure in our body have different types of orgasms have more orgasms enjoy our physical vessel fall in love with our bodies to the degree that anything less than that doesn't even come into your awareness that there is no chance in hell that you would settle for less that you would accept something that you don't really want because you're so fulfilled on your own. You fill your own cup to such a degree that you feel so much satisfaction with your own hands, like that your satisfaction is in your hands. Now I mean that figuratively and literally that you're, that you can be that radiant glowing satisfied, empowered, fulfilled woman, all on your own. You're not waiting for anything. You're not waiting for anyone. You are not outsourcing that in any which way. When you have that, when you are the captain of your own ship in that way, there is no, like, I I can barely get the words out as I think about it. I can never, ever, ever settle again. I will never accept less for myself in the desire to get physical touch or to get sexual or emotional connection or because like they say there's plenty of fish in the sea all these stories that they say about dating 
you change your energy and your vibration so much through taking control of your own power and empowering yourself and educating yourself with this stuff that your entire perception and experience of reality is changed. Like that is so fucking magic. What better way to grow and to change than with the added benefit of orgasm? <laughs> I'm all about personal growth. And I tell you what, it's a fucking arduous journey. Sometimes you get smashed down by life. I have fucking walked this path so many times and so relentlessly, which is why I am who I am today. And I'm so fucking grateful for that. But it's not pleasurable. It's the opposite of pleasure. You have all of your comfort stripped away from you. You have all of your identities and your, like all the things in which you seek solace taken away from you. Using your sexuality as a pathway to personal empowerment is a pleasurable one. No doubt you still have to do the hard work. You have to look inside of yourself at your beliefs, at your limitations, at your past experiences, at your traumas. At like, There's just so much there to work through. But the beautiful thing about this path is that it also comes with pleasure and it also comes with power. So once you start to empower yourself in this way, and once you realize that you have this tool inside your own vessel, inside your own body that you're in charge of, and now you know how to actually use it and you start using it to the way that you start being so fulfilled and radiating with light and joy and becoming this magnetic, glowing. I, I can't, I've lost count of how many people say to me, Erin, you're glowing. I'm like, thank you. Yes. I am because I, now listen, I've been going through a relationship breakup. I'm not necessarily the most sexual woman in the world right now. That's for sure. The emotional strain that that's placing on me, the mental and the physical strain that it's placing on me directly impacts my sexual desire. So I am not by any means experiencing as much sexual pleasure as I know that I'm capable of. But what I also know is that when I prioritize it, when I make a night for myself, when my pleasure is going to be the forefront and I basically romance myself and I have personal foreplay and I, I start to build up my sexual experience into one that's absolutely life-changing rather than just going for a quickie or having the one type of orgasm like so many women I know are capable of. Well, they're actually capable of so much more, but they don't realize it. I know that when I do that, okay, I'll tell you the direct impact. When someone I love is suffering, my desire is to save them and to rescue them. When my clients are suffering, now client relationships are slightly different, but what I do is I match their energy with my energy and I use my energy to elevate them. Now with a client relationship, that client wants change and they need a boost and they need a bit of wind under their wings and they're paying me for my time they're making an investment and a sacrifice on their level to say i value this so that's why i'm very strict about what clients i take on how many clients i have because it's so taxing on my personal energy but when that client takes that energy and transforms it's the most goddamn rewarding and satisfying thing in the world this is why i cry so much and i feel like crying now because my clients transformations are amazing and we're in that journey together Now, it's not healthy to always do that for clients. And it's really important that clients understand how to do that for themselves as well. When it comes to personal relationships, my past pattern, and all I want is that the people that I love don't hurt. And I use my personal power to elevate them. And in personal relationships, that's not healthy at all. That's very, very codependent. So as I see the person that I love so much suffering. All I want to do is take away his pain and save him. <laughs> but I know that I'm robbing him of an amazing transformation if I do that. So my pattern and, and the extreme levels of empathy I feel inside of me is that as soon as I start feeling his pain, I, well, as soon as he starts feeling pain, I feel his pain. By prioritizing my own pleasure, by putting my own needs first, by loving myself in this way, 
I have the power to elevate my energy back to the highest and fullest frequency that I can. The greatest gift that I can give myself and the greatest gift that I can give him is to be at the highest level of energy that I possibly can, knowing and trusting his process. My suffering does not help his suffering. In that circumstance, we have two people that are suffering. If I can, I know that as I, we're still connected energetically, probably always will be in some way, shape or form. My contribution to him as my light gets stronger and brighter on the spiritual plane is the greatest gift that I can give him. We might not see that so easily on the human plane. And I think when you don't have that perspective of spiritual versus human, it can look a bit cruel, I guess, to say, well, I'm just going to go make myself happy. See you later. That's not exactly what I'm saying. But I know that my greatest gift to him and his ability to get through this is me being at the best version of me. So in fact, by me embracing my sexuality and gifting myself with pleasure by regaining my personal power, then I also have the strength to not fall into that codependent pattern, to not outsource my happiness, to not lower my energy in order to try and help or heal or rescue another. So in summary, we have in this beautiful sacred body that we've all been gifted to have this human life experience, we have a power source inside of us that will drastically change our life. And the majority of people on the planet will never utilize it. They won't know that it's there or they don't know how to access it or they don't want to do the work to do it as such, or they're being conditioned to think that sexuality is bad and evil and wrong and dirty. This is why the powers that be since the beginning of time shut this down because it's so empowering for people. And if all of the people were empowered, then the powers that be would not have access to control and manipulation of the masses. So the best way to do that is to use guilt and shame and shut it down. So my vision, my intention, my desire for everyone is to have their personal power expanded and unlocked and, and to receive all of the joy and the incredible gifts that come with it through understanding this body and experiencing our pleasure potential, our sexual potential, and then walking through life as transformed women and men, that we walk through this world completely radically different because we're in touch with the personal power and it is in our hands. That's so fucking amazing. So please, if you feel called, I would love if you came to join me for my pleasure challenge. And as I said, that's for women. It's a free five-day challenge and the links to join it in the show notes. I really hope you've enjoyed this episode. As always, I'd love if you share it with someone that would also benefit from this episode. Find me on Instagram. Come and share the love. Let me know what you loved. Let me know if you have any questions. I want to know it all. Make sure you subscribe. And until next time, laugh loud and fuck louder. Mwah.